Hey everybody, this is the second of three interviews that I'll be doing with Jason Ashment and he is Fish Tank on the Trail. If you haven't seen his video channel, you should go check it out today. There's like 225 or something videos up there of his PCT hike that he did in 2018 and 2019. But in 2021, this year, he's doing the Continental Divide Trail. And so I'm going to be talking to him about, you know, what his preparation is like. And um, just to give everyone kind of an insight of what it takes to do this kind of thing. You can find the first interview right up here. I have a link for it. Go check it out. I hope you enjoy it. See you soon. I think going into this now, I have a I have a knowledge of what is in front of me. Whereas before, I went in just kind of uh, I have no idea. What's that, a haircut? What's going on, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they took off nine inches. Look at that. Um, it's in preparation for the trail. It's uh, As much as I was embracing that hippie, and don't get me wrong, I dig it. I did. I dig the hippie lifestyle. I, I liked it because it was so out there from what I'd done, you know, my entire life. I can't imagine going, you know, five to six months with that mop. It, it would have it would have driven me nuts. So we went in for a trim. Nine inches later, this is what we got. Yeah, sure. yeah, nice. So, so you tripped down there, went good. Yeah, yeah. So I'm. Uh, I I know you can't see much because it is dark, but I'm oh. I'm in Key Largo. Uh, oh. off, you know, we we drove down to the Key West today. I've never done that before. That was pretty cool. We went to a uh, a, uh, a, cra a crab shack down there called the Stoned Crab, and we had man, you name it, we had. We had mussels, we had crab, we had seafood, we had, we ate like kings, and then we we doubled back because tomorrow morning we're going to go out uh, out in the Gulf and we're sport fishing for mahi mahi and and dolphin fish and uh, uh, there's a whole a whole plethora of these exotic type yeah. fish we're going. It's my little girl, girl's birthday. So, yeah, that's yeah, pretty 16. sweet. Yeah, she. I asked her what she wanted for her 16th birthday because that's kind of a big one, right? That's like the first big yep. one in my. Yep. Yep. And she says, Dad, I want to go sport fishing in, in the Keys. And I'm like, man, I, 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 wiped, away, I wiped away a tear. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, pre I appreciate you accommodating me. You know, but for the viewers, we were, we were actually going to do this yesterday, I believe it was. Yeah. Um, but it was an all-day travel day. And, and I appreciate you uh, putting it off a day and letting me get down here. And it's, it's worked. I, just, I wish you could see. Because off, off behind me, it's this beautiful... This beautiful uh, you know, peninsula, and I'm right right on the ocean, yeah. and it's just it's just beautiful. But I'm under this cool tiki hut. They lit it up for me, and so it should work. Yeah, works good. Are you keeping an eye on the game? Sorry, right, go. You don't care. Yeah, you you <laughs> want to know what? So here's and this is for the this is for all the viewers out there. I'm a Steeler fan. Yeah. And it it was great for the first eleven games this year, undefeated baby. And I'm the kind of guy. Once my team's out. Yeah. I didn't even I didn't even know the Super Bowl was today, and Tampa's <laughs> just Tampa's just up the road, yeah. and the place is kind of going. I, I don't even care. I can hear in the uh, there's the resort about 50 yards across this little water peninsula, right over there. There's a big party going, and they keep hooting and hollering. So somebody's obviously doing good. But yeah. you know, I once my team's out of it, I I I don't care. I don't. I really I I haven't watched a game since the Steelers went out. So. <laughs> Yeah, so let's um, let's recap a little bit uh, from our last call. That last call was uh, around ninety days, right? Eighty-eight yeah. days, I think I remember. And it's, yeah. it's it's below sixty now, right? Yeah, it was about a month ago. Yeah, it was about, it's uh, six, 59 days actually. Fifty-nine days from today. So um, you're planning on leaving <laughs> in in early April and six months on the trail if all goes well early september right and my, my my goal my goal is to be done you know i got i gotta be realistic about it and that's one of the big advantages i've got this year versus uh, on the pct is i i know what's coming right i'm giving myself some very realistic expectations and i know zero days and i'm going to take some time and the family's going to come out and see me a couple of days so i i want to be done by october one so i'm leaving salt lake september 6th or september 7th actually I'm not hitting the trail till October 9th because I'm taking a couple of days to 
uh, stash my own water for about the first 80 miles due to the, just the logistics of the Continental Divide Trail. Yep, yep. So hiking time is actually April 9th, and I want to be done October by October 1. I was calculating that if it was six months, it's about 17 miles a day, something like that, average. Yep. Um, yeah, and that's obviously not counting any zero days, but you're right. you're right on the money. Yeah, just just thinking about. I, I like to do that before I go on a trip. Understand how far it is, how many days I have. Cut it up. See see what that looks like. If it feels <laughs> okay, if it feels scary, you know. <laughs> yeah, but for those who haven't done this kind of thing, it, it's not like you start off 17 miles a day and you keep clicking. It's always uh, starting slow, and yep. then some more slow days might be, you know, when you get up in the snow, or if you have bad weather or something that holds you up. But um, and yeah. then there's other days where you know we're approaching 30 miles a day kind of thing. And I and I saw and I saw that in 2019 on the Pacific Crest Trail. You know, at Donner Pass, uh, I was in 25 plus feet of snow. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can't, you're not on the trail. Now, now granted that snow is hard packed. So it's not like you're, you know, shoveling through 26 feet right. of snow for your yeah. listeners. There's really no difference between six inches and 60 feet when it's hard packed, it's hard packed. But the thing is, is you, you can't see the trail. So right. you'll walk 50 feet, then you'll pull out your app and then you'll reacclimate. So it's a series of, of zigzags. Yeah. And, and when it's steep, you're, you know, your micro spikes and you got your ice axe out and you're, you're belaying, you know, each other. And so it, there was days early on, you know, at Donner Pass when I was getting six to seven miles a day and I was, and I was killing myself for those six to seven miles a day. Yeah. But then it averaged out when I hit central Oregon and, and, and parts of Washington where I was doing 30 to 35 miles a day, you know, 40 miles a day. The hard part about a hike like this, and I think it's, it's for anybody experienced or novice, um, you know, first time hikers. And I experienced this on the PCT is that, that the first little while you do want to start out slow. Um, you know, the first, the first day on the PCT, I made it to Hauser Creeks, 15 miles. I remember getting there early in the day thinking, man, I, I only went 15 miles, but only going 15 miles probably saved my, my body from hairline fractures or blown muscles or just, you know, just, yeah. just fatigued yeah. later on down the trail. So you're right. I do have a, a plan to start out, uh, very slow, actually. Um, you know, the first day I want to do 12 to 13 miles and I want to do that consistently for about the first week and just let the feet acclimate let the body acclimate let the pack get comfortable on me again because there'll be a time to kick the tires and light the fires and, and we all you know when that comes it comes yep. it's good but you want to be ready for it so you were planning uh it's not like from the last conversation you're looking maybe like two weeks ahead is is kind of how you're going to plan this thing through yeah just just because of the logistics of this trail we're actually planning up to silver city that's 166 156 i think miles 166 miles um i've got a gentleman that's coming from home that's going to join me um he he's he's hiking with me from zero to 156 or silver city so we're we're really planning to that point uh, logistically because we're driving we need to get to the terminus we got to figure out what to do with his truck we got to figure out how we're going to do what you know the water stashes i've got space i got space pants coming down from oregon and we just found out maui from washington that hiked with me um, for part of the pct he's going to come down and do new mexico with us oh, so we're, yeah. we're we're kind of and i and this is new news as of yesterday so we're kind of just planning out that first 156 miles and that's roughly that's roughly two weeks out there's a gentleman in uh in Mesa, Arizona, that followed the vlog last year. His name's Gary, um, a little bit older gentleman. Um, him and his good wife, Relda, uh, they reached out and they said, "You know, we live in 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 Mesa. We want to. How can we help?" And uh, and he was he was persistent. And so, um, I'm actually not driving to New Mexico as planned. I'm I'm driving down to to Mesa, and we're going to leave a truck at this gentleman's house, and this gentleman's going to shuttle me and my guest um, all the way into Lordsburg. We're going to stay oh, there. Yeah. You know, we're covering the fuel. We're covering the hotels. But he, he's going to help st uh, stash our water for the first, you know, 80, 90 miles. He's going to trail magic us at mile 14.5 at the first cutoff road the, it, with a big barbecue. And we're going to stay the night there. And then he's going to do a breakfast for us. And then day two, we've got the option of slack packing 10 miles. And he'll take the, the sport utility down and, and meet us at another crossroad. And then when we get to Silver City, this gentleman's going to shuttle my my friend's truck from 
Arizona back to New Mexico with a second driver. So my friend can just go straight home nice. to Salt Lake rather than have to do the triangle. This trail angel uh, has caused us to kind of rethink things because he has stepped in and said, fish tank, here's what I would like to do. Let me worry about all I need you to do is get to Mesa, Arizona. If you can get to Mesa, Arizona, I got you the rest of the way. I'll help take care of your water. I'll feed you. I'll trail angel you. It has been so nice. You know, when you're getting ready to start the CDT, there's the little things you don't think of, like contacting the U.S. Border Patrol the day and the time you're going to be there with your vehicle make, model, and license plate number, and who's going to be there. And, you know, the little things like that, which you're, they want you to do. And Gary's got it all, he's got it all handled. Hey, you mentioned last time uh, the snow in Colorado freaking out a little bit. Um, I don't know if you've seen this. I want to put this up on the screen here. I think if I can. Snow levels. You'll see on any normal year, uh, kind of this dark, thick red line. Mm -hmm. That's the median, right? Okay. And, and so, and so you see that in most years, you know, whatever pattern, uh, you know, whatever pattern you're on, just kind of follows this median curve, right? Some of them are pretty close to the curve, but this green one back in 18 was pretty low, mm -hmm. but it yep. still followed the curve, right? Now, yeah. now, now there's some strange thing that went on in, uh, in 2019. So, so this was a weather anomaly kind of thing. This year just went straight up pretty much around mid-February, and it really didn't hold you know, hold steady in, you mm -hmm. know, around April, and then five started dropping off. But, but that was the only odd year uh, in the last few uh, we're this big, thick blue line right here. So, not, no. so, so it looks like we are below average in Colorado right now. Um, I, unless it does a 2019 weird thing, uh, you know, we should be below average, you know, as you, as you get on the trail and, and let's see, you'd be approaching, uh, Colorado, you know, probably early May, I would imagine. Right. Mm-hmm. So, Something like that. Uh, yeah. First or so, second week of May, if all goes well. Yeah, so so you'll be well on a downswing by then, but it should still be below average if it follows the typical median pattern. But I just wanted to show you that that um, we're not having a crazy year with snow right now. Yeah, I finally I've uh, I've finally come to the point where you know what I did twenty six hundred miles of the PCT. I've got the gear, and I'll take it I'll take it one step at a time. I won't I won't uh, I'm I'm not going to put myself in a position that's. Uh, that's, that's compromising or dangerous. And, and then, and the nice thing about the CDT is, is there, you know, the Pacific Crest Trail, it starts in Campo and it ends in Manning Park and it is one trail, 18 inch wide, 2,650 yeah. miles long. And it, it, there's, it doesn't deviate the Continental Divide Trail, man, there's alternates on alternates, yeah, there's high options. roads. That, yeah. There's, so when we get to those options, um, that's when the decision will be made. Right. Um, yeah. We don't have any pre-planned, we're going to take this high road here, this low, we're going to do this alternate. When we get to the fork in the road, we'll just, we'll take what data we have and we'll make the decision. Right. The, the goal, the goal is hike to Canada. Right. Um, whatever route we end up taking, and the beautiful thing about the Continental Divide Trail is it's not, you, know, you do it this way or it doesn't count. It, you just get to Canada on, on, on one aspect of this trail. So that's what we're going to do. And you know, and that that's not just me saying that. That's me listening to a couple of triple crowners out there and some people yeah, that I respect yeah. in the hiking community. And that's what they say. Um, and that's and like you, we talked about last time. That's one of the the spontaneity of the trails. One of the things that make it so magical is you don't know where you're going to sleep that night. You don't know what trail you're going to take. I hiked the PCT with a down ten degree quilt. Um, you know, there's times in, uh, in the first when it was warm in the desert, but I'll tell yeah. you what, um, when I got to 27 feet of snow at Donner Pass and some of those, you know, cold mountain passes in the, you know, the seven cold ones in the Sierra, it was nice having that 10 degree. So thinking I was going to hike the Appalachian, I bought this 40 degree synthetic. I'm really toying with which one do I take? I I'm, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think... I'm going to start with the 40 degree synthetic. Um, it saves me quite a few ounces and uh, some, some, some pack real estate. The 10 degree bag is going to be in his truck. So after, mm. after 156 miles, if I'm not digging it, 
I can swap out at the truck and he can take one home. You know, I use a sleeping pad that not very many people, you know, everybody likes the, uh, the Thermarest, I, the right. Hyper Life, I forget what it's called. The issue I have with that pack is when people roll over on it at night, if they're bare skinned, it sounds like rubbing two balloons together. Yeah. Keeps me up. I found this sleeping pad on Amazon. It's called Sleep and Go. And I'm not sponsored by them. I get nothing out of it. I bought it like the rest. It's a third the price of the others. It's two inches. And I used one for half of the PCT. And it, it's, it's, it's light. It's durable. I loved it. You know, the, those of you that followed the vlog, I started out with the Osprey Atmos. And yeah, and it, you know, that, that's for, for years, that was one of the most popular packs on the PCT, but it's not considered ultra light or super light or even, even hyper light, you know? Um, so I went with it. Is it the Exos? Um, yeah. And I take the, the cranium off the brain off as some people would call it. I think I'm 2.16 pounds and I'm, I, I have not found a pack that I like better that fits me better. That's, uh, you know, a two pound pack. So um, I'm staying with the, uh, the Osprey 50. I want to say it's the 58 liter Exos. And uh, my tent of choice was the Z-Packs Duplex in the camo. Um, it, what, it is starting to show a little bit of wear and tear on some of the corners and some of the seams. And that's after 2,600 miles. You know, then I'm looking at doing 3,100 miles. I, I bought another one, but I went with a, a different color. Uh, same, same, same uh, you know, it's a 16-ounce it's a ounce, 16 ounce tent that utilizes the uh, trekking poles, which I've already got anyway. You got to bring along the same electronics you did, you did last time? The only real gear change as far as electronics is I'm going to demo this solar panel. Um, when I was on the Pacific Crest Trail hiking with Kilo and Double Take, uh, Kilo had this solar panel that would charge. I mean, it was amazing when, uh, you know, it, I used it, I, I used it in, in the, the Trinity Alps of NorCal, I mean, just south of Dunsmuir, and it would charge my stuff faster than a wall out would, a wall out would, would. Um, so I'm going to try that. And instead of carrying a big power bank, I'm just going to carry the little selfie stick I carry has a 5,000 milliamp charger and start side of that. So I'm not carrying like the big anchor type, you know, I'm not carrying the, you know, the 10, the 15 to 20,000 milliamp deal. I'm going to, I'm going to demo the solar charger and see how it works. Again, I'll give it 156 miles. If it's not cutting it, I'll know. And I'll have something else in, my friend's truck and I can swap it out and he can take it back to Salt Lake. Yeah. This one's a, it's called the big blue. I don't know if you're yeah, familiar yeah, with it. Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah. But it, 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 kilos last, it was phenomenal. I, I could not believe how fast it charged my stuff. And I, I just, I got to give it a try. I've got to. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did the same thing on Arizona uh, last time, but I realized it, it requires that direct sun uh, walking yeah. through the woods you know, you, you're not going to get hit as, as yeah. much as you like to, but it depends where you're at. Now, you know, it depends how you position it on your pack. It depends on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all pretty conditional. Um, but through New Mexico, you should do good. Uh, well, and, and again, it's, it's, it's not going to charge like my phone or my Garmin directly. It's, it'll, it'll trickle into this 5,500 milliamp deal. Yeah. That's at least yeah. that's the plan. Yeah. Um, you know, if it doesn't work, I'll just go back to what I was carrying on yep. the Pacific Crest Trail, which was, which was a ten or twelve thousand, I, I believe it was, and yep. it was fine. Yeah. But no, not a whole lot of gear changes. Or real, real fortunate. I, you know, a lot of people are on the the, the CD, CDT web pages, and they're all freaking out about gear and what do I carry? Uh, with. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just taking what I took on the PCT, um, and we'll. I feel pretty good about that. Did you ever read uh, Liz Liz Thomas's book? I haven't. I don't think this will be, um, you know, any big revelations for you because you've lived this, All right? Sure. Um, but but I was wondering, uh, she has in towards the front of the book, you know, preparations for a, a big hike, and so she breaks it down, you know, one year out, uh, six months out, five months out, whatever. She has these list of things that people should be thinking about and doing. Um, and uh, she recommends in there that two months out, like where you're at right now, um, uh, you should be uh, well into your physical training routine, whatever that is. And, and you should be trying out your gear and doing shakedowns and, you know, really tuning in all that stuff. <laughs> and 
I don't think you're the formula kind of guy. Just <laughs> no, because you know what. But, but, but give us give us some insight of what, what what this preparation looks for looks like for you. For me, the preparation is ninety nine percent right here, knowing that my good wife has enough built up in the savings to adequately cover everything she needs to do and still maintain a very you know, a decent lifestyle, you know, going to concerts, going on trips, that type of a thing. So uh, making sure the house, you know, the, we had new central air installed this year. So we're not worrying about a swamp. Make sure the sprinkler systems are all functioning. And on top of that, make sure that there's a, a name and a number in the cupboard. Here's the name of the plumber. Here's the name of an electrician. Here's the name of the sprinkler guy. People that I pre-contacted, hey, I'm leaving for six months. If my wife calls you, do what's got to be done. I'll square up with you. And, the, you know, that's the big thing for me. You know, I, I, I really respect these people that go out and do the shakedowns and do the physical and this and that. But that that's not me. I started the Pacific Crest Trail out so overweight and so sedentary, and I ended up having the most epic experience of my life. Now, is that the smart way to do it? No, but that's my way to do it. Um, I'm not going down on shakedowns hikes because it was just a year ago. I shook down everything for almost 2,700 miles. The CDT, you've got, you've got a lot of decent terrain to get you in shape before you hit Colorado. And I just don't have the, it's very hard to simulate through hiking. It is. It is. You can, you know, you can get on a treadmill and you can throw a pack on you and you can go out. And I had a gentleman last year join me, a headband. And he was, he was, he was walking with a 20 pound pack five miles a day. And he did that for a couple of months in preparation to come join me at, at Goat Rocks. And he got to Goat Rocks and it kicked his butt. And it's just very difficult to simulate it through hiking. It, 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 I, I don't know how you do it. I don't, I don't know how. So to me, what works for Jason Ashman Fish Tank is preparation up here, making sure everything at home is covered, making sure I don't have to worry about what's going on at home. So at my 100%, my efforts and my might and my mind and my strength can go towards the trail. And then just being smart enough to start out 12 miles a day, 12 miles a day, 13 miles a day, and, and not go out in there and try to kill myself. Because, you know, I've gained, you know, COVID, <laughs> COVID was not friendly to me. I've, <laughs> I've put on, like, like a lot of people, I've put on a few some few pounds but here's the deal i know my body and it will not take very long to get back into that um one last thing and then i'll go on to a different subject but you know when i started the pacific crest trail i was a lot worse off than i am now yeah. and when i go through and i watch my videos at the 200 to, you know the, around the big bear mark 200 270 300 mile mark i started to thin out and i started to feel good and and the same thing's going to happen so not real big on pre-hike this and that just because I've done it and it's really hard to, uh, to, to replicate. Now, if, if somebody's never set up a Z-Pax tent, somebody's never lived out of a backpack, if, if this is your first time, absolutely, don't knock yourself out. But, um, and also in Utah right now, it's, it's very difficult. It's, you know, I want to say today it's like 16 degrees and, you know, we've got eight feet of snow in just up the road from my backyard. It's, very hard to stimulate that right now where I'm from. Nothing against Liz because I'm, I'm almost positive she's a heck of a lot more smart. Uh, she's smarter than fish tank. But it just, just for me, I'm just, I'm, just gonna, I'm just going for it, just like I did last time. Now, this is, this is advice for someone who's never done this before. And so, okay. but, but there's, you know, it's, it's kind of a formula, you know, kind, mm -hmm. of, kind of a read. I, I enjoyed it, you know, and I think there's a lot of good information in there for someone who's just, you know, long trails are completely foreign to them. You know, mm -hmm. it's a good read for someone like that. But yeah, I was just curious about what your, you know, what your prep looks like. Uh, and, and everybody has, you know, their own thing. And one thing you mentioned was uh, that you know your body. You know, a lot of people get out there, they don't know what their body can take and can't take. And they get yeah. overzealous and then they get injured. You know, and I and you and, and you and I have both seen it. I know you have, and I I did on the PCT. Yeah. First couple of days, I had people flying by me, yeah. and then we get to Julian, and they're sitting at the bus station because yeah. you know seventy-seven miles, they're done. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. 
So smart. And, and you, want, you want to know something else, uh, David? What it, what it comes down to is when it comes. I, I think I'm just. I think I'm just lazy, man. I, th I think I'm just lazy. <laughs> I think if I'm if I'm out there hiking, I want it to count towards something. I want to be getting towards Canada, not just going around the block. <laughs> let's let's just be honest now. <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah. My wife's my wife's sitting here on the other side of the camera, just kind of laughing. So. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, hi, honey. Hi, Allison. How you doing? <laughs> How are you? Good, good. Hey, happy birthday, little, little girl. <laughs> hey, sorry, everybody, real quick, and, and you can't edit this out, but this is this is Cool Breeze. This is my 16-year-old, and a, how many dads out there would love to hear this? When I asked you what you wanted to do for your birthday, what did you say? Come to the Keys and fish. <laughs> Let's go to the Keys, Dad. I want to go fishing. So she turns 16 tomorrow, so we're going to be out on the water, so I'm pretty proud about that. Yeah, you you really love your dad, or your dad's rubbed up on you, or something. But but that's that, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's okay. pretty cool. Okay. Um, any sponsorships this time? I know you had Digipower and all that last time. Any, anything brewing? Yeah. Yeah, last last year uh, uh, for the PCT was Digipower and Tough Tested, and uh, and I, I actually thought uh, the contact I have um, in he's out of New York for Digipower. We had something all set up, but everything fell through. I think it's uh, I was told not to take it personal. I was told it was uh, you know just the way it is. But to answer your question, absolutely not nothing. Part of me was kind of relieved um, because now I don't have to worry about. You know, am I representing? Am I am I fulfilling what I'm supposed to be doing? And right. so even even if something comes along, we're gonna we're gonna take a good long hard look at it because it's just it was one aspect of the trail that was wasn't just purely free on. I had to I had to remember to use this or say right. or do this or promote this or so we'll see. You know, I'll just I'll just I'll just finish okay. it by saying it's uh, it's bizarre. Um, the excitement has really started to hit. Um, it's, uh, the, you know, the, the the Gary stepping up from Mesa to Trail Angeles to get us down there. Um, Maui joining us. Uh, it's the excitement is at a, about a 9.5. And I am just so excited. Uh, this is going to be an epic, epic year. Um, uh, even, even the traffic on my vlog has started to pick up and it's, we're going to put out a quality product. It's going to be fun. It's going to be family friendly. I'm just, I'm just so excited that I get to go do this and I'm so thankful I get to go do this again. And it's even longer than the PCT. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> so huge, yeah. huge, huge shout out to my good wife. Who's, who's allowing me to do this. Um, friends like you that, that help promote it and support along the way with words of encouragement. My kids that are good kids that don't get into any trouble ever that allow me to go do stuff like that. I'm just, I'm truly, truly blessed. I guess we talked again about it when I got about a month out, right? That's the plan. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I got like the 4th of March-ish. So I'll, I'll we'll get in touch around then and we'll schedule it up. And Yeah, it's, it's, it's a hoot, you know. It's, <laughs> it's fun to do stuff like this. I thank you very, very much. Oh, so. my pleasure. I appreciate it. And, and I'm gonna we're we're gonna get together in Colorado on the trail. You're gonna come out and we're gonna we're gonna do a, a half a day or a day or you're gonna we gotta at least do something on the trail. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah we're gonna do that. We'll we'll figure out when and where uh, the closer we get. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Well, yeah. Uh, enjoy your time down there. Be safe. Oh. And uh, enjoy. For sure. For sure. <laughs> Thanks so much. It was nice do. talking to you. And, and then, like I'll have service. Let me know if you need anything else, my friend. We'll do. All right. All right. Take care. Take care, brother. See you. Bye. See you. Bye.